All right, folks, welcome to the third edition of Ape Answers, the ham radio show where we answer your questions. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about balance and ununs, specifically in use with a folded dipole. Let's take a look at the question. So here we can see Hillbilly Tarzan asked, I want to put up a folded dipole using a 450 ohm ladder line for the feed line and antenna. I also need to use a short piece of coax from the radio, so a 4 to 1 balance between the coax and ladder line is all I need. Question. No other balance or chokes? I'm using ladder line feed line because it's going up pretty high and there's less weight, less loss, and I have a 500 foot roll on hand. So that's awesome that you have 500 feet of that stuff. Uh, I don't believe it's very cheap, so that's a, that's a pretty handy thing to have. So let's just talk a little bit about the antenna. And when you talk about a folded dipole, I've never really messed around with these things too much. But I'm assuming that you want to use this on multiple bands. Uh, but I could be incorrect about that. So we're going to talk about a couple of different things. Also, you talk about a short piece of coax from the radio. So four to one ballon into coax is all you're going to need. So a lot of people will think that they need to use a 4 to 1 ballon in a case like this because the ladder line is 450 ohm. Actually, that's nine times the impedance that you would see on a 50 ohm piece of coax. But really what's most important is the impedance that you're going to see at that feed point of the ladder line, including your antenna. So I don't know what size you're going to use, so I'm not able to model it. But what we would want to do is we would want to test the impedance there to determine what type of device you would need. Also, if you're going to be using this thing multi-banded, your impedance is going to change as a result of frequency changes. So it's going to be pretty hard to predict. So here's just a very simple drawing that I did of a folded dipole. And you can see I have a box on there with a question mark because that's kind of what we're talking about. From a practicality standpoint, what I think I would do uh, if I was using this as a multi-banded device and I was using an antenna tuner, I'd actually put a one-to-one -one in there uh, as a choke. And the, the reason I would do that is, is that sometimes impedance can vary wildly, but a four-to-one ballon is going to step everything down by a factor of four. So let's say you even have 100 ohms of impedance at that feed point if you divide that by four then you have 25 ohms going into your coaxial cable and what makes that difficult is is that not all tuners work really well with low impedance so i know a lot of people are going to get on me and say you're supposed to use a four to one for that i probably would use a one to one and see how it goes so here we have a couple of different schematics where you can take a look at a ballon and an unun, and we're more concerned about the ballon in this case because we use those for symmetrical antennas, and you can see the schematic for the ballon on the left. And you can see the center winding or the center tap of the ballon goes to your coaxial shield, and what this winding configuration does is it does help you suppress common mode current, which is the reasons we want to use ballons in the first place. This also does a little bit of an impedance transformation from 200 to, four, to 50 ohms, as we talked about. When you ask a device like this to play a dual role, especially if you're transforming, um, especially if you're using a lot of power or current through this, these devices get pretty hot. Um, and as a result, I, I think I would, in your case, use a one-to-one, -one, and then I would let my tuner sort everything out uh, at the end. Not 100% sure if that is your use case or what you're going to do, but I'd start there, and then if I had problems, then maybe I would try uh, making my own 4 to 1 ballon, putting it on there, but I would immediately put a 1 to 1 choke behind it and uh, see how that performs for you. Anyhow, good luck with the antenna. So part of the first question asked about chokes, and then we got this question from Rich for you, 1973, and he asked, could you actually show choking in the ham shack? And we can do that. So this is a picture that I did a long time ago uh, for my ham shack, which has evolved quite a bit since then. But I do go a little bit overboard with choking. Uh, where I live is an RF-rich environment, and I had a very high noise floor. And it took a lot of work and a lot of trial and error to be able to get that noise floor lower. And the way I did it is I started out, and we'll start out on the right side of the screen. You can see my antenna and I have a piece of coax there. I use a choke on both ends of my coaxial cable, and this would help me with any RFI or CMC that, that uh, could be coming in from an imbalance on the antenna or if there was any uh, currents being picked up by my coaxial line, any kind of interference. And I found that to be very helpful. The other thing is, is I have an LDG tuner that goes to my IC7300. And there's two lines there because there's a control cable and then there's a coaxial cable. 
and I do choke the coaxial cable between the tuner and the radio. Now also at this time I was controlling my radio uh, for digital modes with a Raspberry Pi and I put a choke on the USB cable that connected my Raspberry Pi to my 7300. And then also have a power cord and it just shows a ground depiction here, but I put a choke on that as well. So the thing is, is that when you're getting common mode currents in your ham shack or your environment, it's looking for low impedance source to ground. And I, what I really wanted to do is choke every and any point that I could. And this would help with common mode currents coming in off of my antenna and coaxial configuration, or it would help with any kind of RF noise that was being generated by things like my Raspberry Pi. Also, I used an MFJ switching power supply. Uh, I believe this was the 22.4 MVP. I can't remember. And there is a power cord that goes between the power supply and the radio. And I choked that. I took and did about 12 turns of the 10 gauge wire around a 240 Mix 31 toroid. And then the power cable that I plug in from the power supply to my mains power, I also wrapped that around about eight times on a T240 uh, Mix 31 toroid. So what I really do in a nutshell is choke any and every cable that I possibly can. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.